Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Madre. Now, this is kind of old news because it's in the aftermath of the Seattle Seahawks and San Francisco 49ers game. Now, the game-changing play is when Kuiper Nick threw a pass to Michael Crabtree, Crabtree being covered by Richard Sherman, and Sherman had deflected the ball. It fell into linebacker's hand. Game over. Seattle won. And at the end of that, there was a brief verbal exchange between Sherman and Crabtree. Crabtree pushed Sherman by the face. That's all done and said. After the game, reporter went up to Richard Sherman to talk about the play. And Richard Sherman went off because he was upset about something that had been said about, you know, from Michael Crabtree. So after that, there's a whole shitstorm of negativity. Now, me personally, I don't really care much for Richard Sherman. He's a very dynamic cornerback, one of the best in the game today. Uh, great cover skills. And even though a post-game interview with Michael Crabtree where he said Sherman didn't really do much, the fact of the matter is Kaepernick didn't really target to Richard Sherman's side that much. Now, I'm not taking sides because I'm not a big fan of either team. I can watch both teams. They both have dynamic quarterbacks, strong defenses, pretty good offense. And one of those would eventually have to be the winner to go to the Super Bowl. And they are huge, huge rivals being from the NFC West. So you talk to any 49ers fan, and there's a lot of teams that they tell you that they cannot stand. But at the top of their list, I'm sure the majority would say the Seattle Seahawks. Me as a Redskins fan, a lot of my videos, especially on my other channel for the Redskins, you'll hear me say in just about every video, fuck the Cowboys. That is the rival for the Washington Redskins. But this isn't about my team or the Cowboys, but fuck the Cowboys all the same. And I'll say that again. But between the San Francisco 49ers and the Seahawks, there's always going to be shit talking between the two teams. Now, anyone who knows Richard Sherman... When they eliminated the Redskins last season, or actually not last season, well, yeah, last season, the first round of the playoffs, there was a little bit of a skirmish between the left tackle, Trent Williams, and Richard Sherman. Trent Williams caught him on the chin. You know, what was done was done, but Sherman being a cornerback and being a very good cornerback, he has the skills and he's got the right to talk shit because he backs it up with his play on the field. Now, in the aftermath of his rant, once again, there was a lot of negativity, people jumping onto social networking sites, and they had a lot of stuff to say about Richard Sherman, you know, calling him porch monkeys, and that's most of what they were calling him was a monkey. And the funny thing is, these people would never really go out and say something like that in a black person's face. At the same time, when CNN, because I watched a video from CNN, and they had detailed some of the Twitter posts by some of these individuals, I went searching for these uh, individuals' pages. Some of them had their page protected because they were generating a lot of hate mail. I know one of them was from, from some young kid in Hawaii. Uh, his page is protected. There was another one where a gentleman had deleted his post because of the shitstorm. And I don't know how he's uh, addressing that, but I can imagine when you go to a social networking site and you make some sort of what we can consider as a racial or an incendiary con comment against another ethnicity, there's always going to be a lot of negativity. That's why it's always important to think about what you say before you post it so that the world can see it. And these people, even though some of them may not be considered racist, it's a comment that is definitely considered racist that will draw negative attention if you decide to post it for the world to see once again. So it's just funny that how people who can make these comments will, one, never say it in a black person's face. And when you get behind the keyboard, it's pretty fucking hilarious how you have the bravery to say some of the shit that you do. But the moment that you step away from your computer, go out into the open world, and you get around these people that you consider niggers, a porch monkey, spear chuckers, wetbacks, whatever you call it, from whatever ethnicity, 
you won't generally say it to their face. Now, there are a lot of open racists who will post comments, and they'll have the videos. They don't hide behind some sort of generic or pseudonym screen name. They don't use any type of generic picture on the profile. They show themselves for who they are. They make the video. They won't necessarily give the address or anything like that, but you have to give them credit for at least not hiding. It's still pretty fucked up. I don't advocate racism at all. Uh, I talk about the subject briefly in a lot of my videos, and I'm pretty sure with this video, just like whenever I discuss race, there's always going to be someone that's going to jump on the page and going to have some negative comments about me. They might see my pictures in the background and make comments. My wife is Mexican. We have a biracial child. My ex-wife is white. We have two children. My brother-in-law, one of my older sisters, he's from Argentina. And I have a sister whose father is white. So I don't have time for racism. And my best friend is white. So I don't have time for racism. I don't discriminate against one person. And even though I don't really care much for Richard Sherman, I don't have anything negative to say about him. He can act like an ass clown when he gets in front of the camera. But the one thing that you'll never see from Richard Sherman is when he gets in front of the camera, he's very well spoken, pretty damn articulate. And a lot of people are judging the fact that because he's from Compton, they call him a thug. And it's always funny when people consider someone black a thug. First of all, there's nothing that Richard Sherman did that is constituted as a thug. He's a professional football player. When he gets up behind the podium, if he's not wearing sweats or he's not wearing his uniform, he's wearing a nice suit that probably costs more than what a lot of people make in a couple of months. But he, he speaks with clarity and he's very intelligible when he speaks, but he doesn't use profanity. He might in his own private time, but he represents his team and the players that work around him to the best of his ability. So him ranting and going off, that's a personal thing. And the world didn't necessarily have to, have to see it. But at the same time, for people to get on social networking sites and make some of the racist comments that they made, they basically out of themselves. And with the thanks of CNN, these people have become infamous for all the wrong reasons. So, it, like I said, it's humorous that people would try to make these comments and then all of a sudden get outed by a media network such as CNN, post the comments, post the Twitter names or the Twitter handles, whatever you want to call it. And now some of them kept their pages up and are getting a whole bunch of negativity, but a lot of them have either protected their Twitter account or deleted it because of the blowback from what they said. And for them, I call them bitches simply because they can't back up what they say and now that they're drawing this negative heat upon themselves, they can't stand it. So that's pretty much all I needed to say about that. Uh, as far as who I would predict to win the Super Bowl, uh, to me it really doesn't matter. I, I, all I know is you have a very dynamic offense with the Denver Broncos, and you have a very, very shut-down defense with the Seattle Seahawks. Both are very good teams. Otherwise, they wouldn't be going to the Super Bowl, and the record stands for itself. But do I think that Peyton Manning is going to target Richard Sherman? We're going to have to see the Super Bowls on February the 2nd. And if the Seahawks should win, I wonder what people are going to have to say about Richard Sherman, especially if he picks off Peyton Manning or if he is the game changer that ultimately decides the outcome of the game. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And I'm also going to leave a link to the CNN video that I saw where they were interviewing Richard Sherman and a lot of the negativity from his rants. I'll just leave that in the uh, comments section. But if you like this video, I hope that you like, subscribe, and share. Peace.